Okay, in the last class uh, we were uh, discussing two figures of merit. One is the value utilization factor and the other one is transformer utilization factor. Both these factors have to be minimized. So, let us say how to choose these values for a given value of pulse number. So, if I try to recall what was the expression for the transformer utilization factor TUF, the expression is pi by under root 2q sin pi by q. So, tuf is dependent only on q and q is a positive integer greater than or equal to 2. Okay? So, that is what we have been restricting the value of q to. So, one can see that tuf is minimum when it is equal to 3. So, what I will do is I will try to give the value of tuf for different values of q. Suppose I take different values of q and also get the values of tuf. So, the first value of q is 2. So, our q is equal to 2 tuf can be calculated it is 1.571. <coughs> for q is equal to 3, just substitute in the expression 1.481. For q is equal to 4, it is 1.571. For q is equal to 5, it is 1.690. q is equal to 6, it is 1.814. So, we see that uh, uh, it can be verified by substituting different values of q, what is the value of tf. So, q is equal to 2 gives 1.571 and the next value of q that is 3 gives a lower value. Then after that a higher value of q gives a higher value of tf. Now, as q increases the value of tf uh, uh, continues to increase, this can be verified. Okay? So, the optimum value of q is so, q is 3 is something uh, which is uh, a coincidence because our AC systems all are three phase systems. Okay. So, we can say that P should be a multiple of 3. Now, this is only based on TUF. See, please note this result is applicable based on TUF. Now, we have to verify whether the value utilization factor will give a different uh, choice for uh, Q and hence a different uh, choice for P. Okay. So, sorry, this is based on, based on TUF. Okay. So, if the pulse number P is equal to say, 3, then this means the optimum values of q, r and s are q equal to 3, r equal to 1, s equal to 1. Okay. Now, let us uh, just make our choice by taking this value of 3 which is obtained based on tuf. So, if I say based on tuf p should be a multiple of 3 the first uh, possible value of p is 3 itself. The second possible value is 3 into 2. Okay. Suppose p is equal to 6, then the question is what should be the value of q, what should be the value of r, what should be the value of s. Now, the only hint we have got so far is for the value of q. So, there are, I mean, we, we saw that q should be a multiple of 3 based, that is based only on TUF. So, either it can be equal to 3 or equal to 6, okay. But still, we should not rule out other choices for q because uh, this result of p being multiple of 3 is only based on TUF, it is not based on the other uh, utilization factor. 
So, let us try to consider all possible choices. So, uh, all possible choices of q, r and s which will give a p equal to 6. Okay. So, let us form a table. So, I will try to show all possible cases which will give me p equal to 6. So, I will try to try to consider different values of q, r, s and such I mean these values are such that the product of these three values is equal to 6. So, my intention is to get p equal to 6. Okay. So, let us see for the different choices of q, r, s which will give p equal to 6 the values of value utilization factor as well as transformer utilization factor. So, how many possible choices are there for q, uh, r and s for this given value of p which is 6. So, 6 choices let us see what are the possible choices of q see q has a constraint it should be greater than or equal to 2 ok. So, q is always greater than or equal to 2 r, r and s are greater than or equal to 1 and all are integers all are positive integers. So, let me take this least possible value of q now please note I am taking q equal to 2 this is because the earlier result of uh, uh, q equal to 3 was only based on t v f. So, if q is equal to 2 then I can have r equal to 1 and s equal to 3 so that p is equal to 6 or I can also have r equal to 3 and s equal to 1. Okay. Now, these are the only two cases with q equal to 2 the next possible value of q is 3. So, if q is equal to 3 then the possible values of r and s 1 and 2 or 2 and 1. So, 3 1 2 3 2 1 any other possible value of q 6. So, if this q itself is 6 r and s should be 1 so that p is equal to 6. So, these are the only 5 possibilities for p is equal to 6. So, for each of these 5 uh, po 5 possibilities let us see what is the value of vuf what is the value of tuf so i'll just give, give the values we have the expressions so this is 1 1.0471 1.571 3.142 1.571 1 1.047 1 1 1.041 2.094 1.481 2.094 1.814 So, if you look at the last two columns these two columns give the value of values of the two uh, figures of merit that we are trying to minimize. So, if you look at the value utilization factor the least value of value utilization factor occurs for two cases the least value is 1.047. So, 1.047 is occurring for q equal to 2 r equal to 1 s equal to 3 and it is also occurs for q equal to 3 r equal to 1 s equal to 2. Now, if you look at the transformer utilization factor that is the last column again there are two cases in which t u f is minimum the minimum value 1.481 there are two cases. Now, the two cases for which minimizes v u f are not the same as the two cases which uh, minimize t u f, but there is one case with q equal to 3 r equal to 1 s equal to 2 which minimizes both v u f and t u f. So, obviously, this is the best choice for q, r and s for the given value of p that is 6. Okay. So, now let us say what is the circuit for q equal to 3, r equal to 1, s equal to 2. So, I will try to draw the circuit only for this case. So, we are not interested in the other cases because they are not resulting in optimum values of the two figures of merit. Okay. So, from now on 
when I consider p equal to 6, the only possible values of q, r and s are 3, 1, 2 respectively. So, let me try to draw the circuit. So, for the sake of simplicity, what I will do is I will draw uh, the uh, voltage source. I will show a voltage source in the circuit diagram. Though uh, we know that in practice, the voltage is obtained as the EMF across a transformer winding. So, q is equal to 3, r is equal to 1 and s is equal to 2. So, this is the same as the case that we saw which minimizes <coughs> VUF and TUF. So, there are two commutation groups, basic commutation groups that are connected in series. S is equal to 2 means uh, two commutation groups connected in series. Since R is equal to 1, there is only one parallel path. Okay. And in each, in each commutation group, uh, there are three thyristor valves or three voltage sources. So, if I try to draw the circuit diagram. So, this is one commutation group. There is one more commutation group connected in series with this. So, I bring out two terminals which are the terminals of the DC side and the voltage across this is V. Okay. So, let me give some name for uh, uh, these thyristor valves, but before that let me try to give the expression for the voltages. Okay. So, uh, suppose uh, uh, this voltage is E m cos omega o t. Now, if I take one commutation group in which there are three sources, the voltages should be displaced by 120 degrees, 2 pi by 3 that is uh, 120 degrees. So, this voltage will be E m cos omega o t minus 120 degrees and this voltage is E m cos omega o t plus 120 degrees. Now, there is one more basic commutation group, there are uh, three sources in that commutation group as well. So, the voltages of these uh, three uh, voltages in the second commutation group also are displaced by 120, but they, these voltages are not in phase with the original voltages, that is the voltages of the first commutation group. So, what will be the voltage of uh, uh, the voltage source in the second uh, basic commutation group? Let me take the first voltage source. Of course, the peak values are all same, E m. E m plus pi pi say if i have six sources in this circuit i have six sources so if i want a waveform which is close to ideal say our ideal waveform is always a constant voltage for the uh, dc side voltage vd see vd is having a desirable voltage which is constant 
Now I can't achieve constant voltage, but I can achieve the best possible waveform for VD. So if I want to do that, what should be the phase angle difference between the six voltage sources? 60 degrees, it is 360 by 660. So I should select the phase angles of the voltages of the second commutation group such that the phase angles of the six voltages are displaced by 60 degrees. But still, if you take the individual basic commutation group, the phase angle difference is 120 degrees. So what should be the voltage of the first voltage in the second basic commutation groups? Em cos omega OT minus 60 degrees. Then the second voltage is Em cos omega OT minus sorry minus 180 degrees and the third voltage is Em cos omega OT plus 60 degrees. So let me give some names for uh, some of these voltages. Suppose I call this voltage as Ea. See this A, B, C are letters used for the three phases. So E with a subscript A means A phase voltage. I mean, one can say that. I'll call this as Eb. Okay. And this is Ec. Now I will not give a special name for the uh, next voltage that is in the second commutation group. There is a voltage Em cos omega OT minus 60 degrees. Now, can I write that in terms of uh, one of the uh, notations Ea, Eb, Ec? Can I write it in terms of the already used notations Ea, Eb, Ec? Okay, that is one way of doing. But okay, let, let me go to the second voltage Em cos omega OT minus 180 degrees. Can I say that is minus Ea? So this is minus Ea. Okay, I will come to the first voltage. This is minus Ea. Now, now let us come to the first voltage Em cos omega OT minus 60 degrees. Can I write that as negative of some already used notation? Minus, minus EC. So this is minus EC. And Em cos omega OT plus 60 degree is minus EB. So this is minus EB. Now, I will try to do some manipulations uh, by just altering the positions of the thyristor and the voltage source. Say when I have a thyristor connected in series with a voltage source, okay. so as long as it is a series connection, if I interchange the positions, the circuit working will not change. See if there are two components connected in series. If I interchange the positions of the two components, uh, the circuit still performs in the same way. Okay. So what I will do is, I will try to slightly alter the circuit. Okay. So I will say that this is equivalent to, so I will draw one more circuit diagram. So this is the first uh, basic commutation group. The voltage here is Ea, the voltage here is Eb, the voltage here is Ec. So I will give some names for uh, the thyristor valves also. I will complete this diagram. So suppose I call this 1, 
thyristor valve 1. Now, I will go to the next voltage waveform which is immediately lagging E A. So, it is not E B, it is minus E C. Say the phase angle of minus E C is minus 60. So, I will call this thyristor as thyristor valve 2. Okay. Then the next voltage is minus 120. The next one which is lagging minus E C is E B. So, I will call this 3. Okay. Then the next voltage which lags E B is minus E A that is 4 and the next voltage is this one E C and then minus E B which I will call this 6. Okay. So, here I have 1, 3, 5 as it is and the connected voltages are E A, E B, E C as it is. Now, come to the second uh, basic commutation rule. So, what I will do is I will interchange the positions of the uh, thyristor valve and the voltage source. So, I will first put the voltage source. and then the valve. Right? Now, there are uh, three parallel uh, paths. So, th there are three voltages minus E A, minus E C, minus E B and uh, thyristor valves 2, 4, 6. Okay. So, one of the voltages is minus E A. So, I will show minus E A. Suppose this is minus E A. See, minus E A is appearing in the first circuit as the second branch, second parallel branch, but I am showing it in the as a first branch because all these are connected in parallel. Okay. So, what is connected in series with minus E A? Which thyristor are? 4. Then there is a voltage uh, minus E B and the valve that is connected in series with minus E B is 6 and there is a voltage minus E C and the valve that is connected in series with uh, minus E C is 2 and of course, the voltage across the two D C side terminals is V D. Okay. Now, I say that the second circuit diagram is equivalent to the first circuit diagram. The only change is in the second basic computation group, I have inter interchanged the positions of the valve and thyristor valve and the voltage source that is all. Okay. Now, how does that matter? Okay. Let us see how does this matter. So, for that I need to draw one more equivalent circuit. So, I will retain the circuit of the first uh, basic commutation group as it is. So, I have thyristor valves 1, 3, 5 and they are respectively connected in series with the voltage sources E A, E B, E C. Now, if you look at the second basic commutation group, which consists of thyristor valves 4, 6, 2 connected in series with minus E A, minus E B, minus E C respectively. Now, take the thyristor valve 4. The cathode of 4 is connected to the negative terminal of minus E A. Okay. So, let me give some name. Suppose I call this terminal as say terminal A. I call this terminal as say terminal B. 
I call this terminal as say terminal C, some names uppercase A, B, C, I have used. Okay. Now, what is the potential of terminal C with respect to terminal A? See, minus Ea is the potential of A with respect to C. Minus Ea is the potential of A with respect to C. What is the potential of C with respect to A? Ea. So, that is as good as the potential of B with respect to A. So, that means B and C are at the same potential. I will repeat, potential of A with respect to C is minus A because plus is at A, minus is at C. So, the potential of A with respect to C is minus Ea. So, potential of C with respect to A is negative of that is Ea. So, that is nothing but the potential of B with respect to A. So, that means B and C are at the same potential. So, that means even if I short B and C, I mean the, I mean the circuit will work as it was working originally. So, what can I do? I can actually eliminate one of the sources. See, there is no point in connecting two voltage sources in parallel. Two equal voltage sources in parallel, I mean I can just reduce it to one voltage source. So, what I can do is connect this cathode of thyristor valve 4 to B directly. So, what I see this is B. So, I take this terminal B and connect it to the cathode of 4. Is that okay? Now, a similar explanation can be done even for the second path and the third path. So, I can say that this is equivalent to connecting this terminal, positive terminal of EB can be connected to the cathode of thyristor valve 6 and the positive terminal of EC is connected to the cathode of thyristor valve 2. Is this okay? So, the two DC side terminals are brought out here, the voltage across the DC side is VD. Now, what did we achieve by doing these manipulations? See, though these uh, uh, circuits contain voltage sources, in practice they are E and EMFs induced in the transform winding. So, they are transformer windings. Now, by getting this uh, third circuit, see I started with the original circuit. From the in the third circuit, you see three voltage sources. In the original circuit, there are six voltage sources. It essentially means I can show that a circuit with six transformer windings is equivalent to a circuit with only three transformer windings. Though, so, I do not need six transformer windings, I need only three. So, what will be the effect on transformer utilization factor due to this? It gets reduced by how much? Yeah, it is tempting to say half, but the number of windings get reduced by half, but the current rating, what about the current rating? See, I have reduced the number of transformer windings, but by reducing the number of transformer windings, what uh, I mean, what is actually happening here is current in current rating increases, but what was the wave shape of the current through the individual transformer winding? It is a constant for a certain duration equal to I d by r and for the rest of the time is 0 if you take any one cycle. See, the waveform is like this. Suppose. So, if I take one cycle, so I can always find a, a value C such that the wave shape of the current through the transformer winding is like this, where it is equal to I d by r for a certain duration and it is equal to 0 for the rest of the duration in the period. So, this duration is, this duration is I mean the in the original circuit, I am talking about the original circuit. 
2 pi y cube okay 2 pi y cube okay. so suppose i take uh, the current here as i now suppose uh, i take the revised circuit i take the current here as say i prime i prime so current rating of each transformer winding increases by a factor of root 2. Now, I am talking about this circuit, the current rating of each transformer winding in this circuit, in the last circuit that I derived. For this circuit, TUF is equal to the value that was obtained. So, the value was 1.481, 1.481 divided by root 2. So, there is a reduction in the transformer utilization factor. So, this is possible by manipulating the circuit. So, what is this uh, circuit? I mean, are you familiar with this circuit? Yeah, this circuit has a name, it is called great circuit. Maybe there are many sources which start from this circuit, but the circuit is not obvious. See, what we started with was an obvious circuit. We started with one thyristor valve, one AC voltage source. Okay. Then we tried to connect many such things in parallel. Then many such uh, uh, parallel combinations in series, many such series combination parallel so on. So, what we started with something which was obvious, but great circuit is not something obvious. I mean, I mean it is not obvious why it should work. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, actually great circuit is derived. It is not uh, something which has which will come just at once, you know. So, great circuit is in fact derived from something which is more obvious, okay. So, normally it is not drawn this way, I mean, I mean uh, if you try to look at this circuit, I mean the, this is not uh, the way in which it is drawn normally. So, we draw it like this. So, we show what is known as a leg. So, there are three legs. and there are three voltage sources. So, this voltage is E A. So, I am just redrawing the circuit that we just now obtained. So, these three voltages are E A, E B, E C and they are displaced by 120 degrees and the name of this thyristor valve is 1, this is 3, this is 5. What about this one? This is 4, 6, and I have a DC side with two terminals, the voltage across the DC side is V. So, this is how it is drawn usually. So, this is the great circuit which can be derived from a circuit or combinations of circuits that are uh, more obvious. Now, this is a very ideal circuit because the transformer EMFs are shown as voltage sources, but in practice there is something which we cannot ignore that is the uh, leakage inductance. Okay. So, many times we will consider uh, the circuit, so I will go to the next page, our converter circuit for p equal to 6 is just this. So, I have 3 legs,
So, the converter consists of just 6 thyristor valves. So, 6 thyristor valves form the converter and you can easily show see that there are distinguishable AC and DC sides. The 3 wires on the left form the AC side and the 2 wires shown on the right form the DC side. So, what we will do in this course is we will assume that the AC side that means whatever is connected on the AC side has a simple circuit and there is a circuit for what is connected on the DC side. So, we will start with some very simple circuits for what is connected on the AC and DC sides as far as this course is concerned. So, we will assume that the AC side is represented by a voltage source in series with a an inductance in each phase. So, there is an inductance L in each phase and of course, a three phase balanced voltage source E A, E B, E C. So, three phase balance sinusoid. Now, one should note that uh, this converter is only this much. See, when I say converter, uh, I am only talking about this for the time being whatever is in this red dashed line is the converter. And whatever I have shown beyond this is the representation of what is connected on the AC side or DC side. Now, on the DC side as far as this course is concerned for the time being we will assume that there is a very large inductor on the DC side. So, the inductor will act as a filter for the current. So, due to which the current is a constant. So, current is constant means I can just represent the current uh, by a source. So, I will call this current I d. Of course, there is a voltage here V d, the voltage instantaneous voltage is V d, but the DC side is represented by a current source. So, we will spend uh, a few classes on analyzing this uh, particular converter. So, please note whatever is marked in the red dashed box is the converter and the current source on the DC side is a representation of what is there on the DC side and a voltage source in series, the three phase voltage source in series with the uh, inductance L in each phase is a representation of what is there on the AC side. What exactly comes on the AC side and what is there on the DC side let us uh, come to that much later. Now, for the sake of uh, simplifying our analysis, we will make a very simplifying assumption of these circuits on the AC and DC side. Now, we will spend some time on this, but we will spend uh, uh, just one class or at least slightly more than that on a much simpler circuit for the sake of simplicity. We will start with the for the sake of simpli I mean simplifying uh, the first circuit that we analyze, we will make L equal to 0. So, if L is equal to 0, the circuit becomes even more simpler. Okay. So, we will of course, uh, we will consider L, but we will start with a very simple case L equal to 0. So, if L is 0, then there is only voltage source on the AC side.
So, you see that uh, uh, there are 6 valves, but but we as uh, I mean as we know from the previous explanation there are two uh, two uh, basic commutation groups see valves 1 3 and 5 they form one basic commutation group valves 2 4 6 form another basic commutation group. so this uh, uh, basic commutation group consisting of valves 1 3 5 is called upper commutation group upper commutation group and valves 2, 4, 6 form the lower commutation group. So, at any instant only one of them is conducting. Now, please note this is uh, in agreement with uh, the uh, original circuit which was very simple. I mean there was only voltage source and thyristor valve. Now, just in the uh, previous circuit, I had showed inductor also. So, there is an inductance L in each phase, but the presence of an inductance makes the circuit complicated. So, if there is no inductance as in this case, at any instant there is only one thyristor that conducts among 135 and at any instant there is only one thyristor that, conduct, that conducts among 246. Okay. So, uh, there is some uh, instant at which the transfer of current happens from one, one, one thyristor to the other in the same commutation group. So, uh, the transfer of current from one valve to the other is known as commutation. Okay. So, we use the word commutation to mean transfer of current from one valve to another. in the same group, in the same commutation group. So, this is called commutation. So, the word commutation is actually used to mean this. And uh, there is a term known as commutation voltage. So, we will be using this many times. Commutation voltage means that is the voltage which appears across a valve at the instant of turn on. So, voltage that appears across a thyristor valve at the instant of turn on. So, that means each thyristor valve has a commutation voltage. That means there are 6 thyristor valves. So, there are 6 commutation voltage, one for each. So, uh, we will start with this simple circuit, we will try to analyze this uh, uh, in the next class. So, there are a few things uh, to be talked about in this circuit. So, once we are through with this circuit, then we will go on to the next circuit with inductance.